Church services in Gananoque began in the early 1800s under the leadership of traveling Methodist ministers and occasionally by the Reverend Robert McDowell, who was a missionary in the Dutch Reformed Church of New York. This was prior to the War of 1812. Abigail Stone, Joel Stone's second wife, Joel Stone was one of the founders of Gananoque. Abigail was an ardent Methodist, but welcomed all visiting ministers. The first Presbyterian service in Gananoque was held in October of 1811, led by Reverend William Smart, an itinerant minister who did a weekly circuit out of Elizabethtown, which was later called Brockville. The response was encouraging with 50 to 100 people attending when he came to town. Reverend Smart was raised in the traditions of the We Free Church of Scotland, and one of his first initiatives was to start a Sunday school in Brockville, which was the first in Canada. Reverend Smart Circuit often covered 1,200 miles a month on horseback. His yearly stipend was $600. The War of 1812 brought a change to the congregation as many men were called to serve in the militia. Some returned to the United States to fight with the Americans and others left the area worried about the hostilities and the effects on their home and families. Attending Reverend Smart services was tantamount to publicly stating your loyalty to the British Crown, which was a statement many were unwilling to make. Reverend Smart began to hold services in most of the militia camps in order to support local volunteers. Meanwhile, the village of Lansdowne began to spring up around a carriage stop and hotel at the corner of Highway 2 and Reynolds Road. Although no records were kept, it is possible that the people of Lansdowne either attended services in Gananoque or had itinerant ministers lead services on an irregular basis. Sharing a minister between the two communities of Gananoque and Lansdowne has had significant has had historical precedence, although we are now worshiping together in one building. Reverend Smart married Augusta Foote in 1816, and their only child, William, later became a judge in Belleville. He continued to serve the Presbyterian community in Gananoque until 1837. Reverend Smart was put on trial in 1824 for performing more than a thousand weddings over 60 years. The problem was that he was a successional, sorry, secessionist Presbyterian who could not perform marriages under British colonial law. Licenses were only granted to Church of England ministers, in other words, Anglican, and they were not, there was not one in the area. In the trial, the jury returned a verdict of no bill, probably because they were related to knew or were themselves married by Reverend Smart. At that time, all juries were made up of male landowners. The congregation grew with the addition of Scots militia settling in the area and an influx of stonemasons from Scotland who worked on many of the homes and buildings. The MacDonald family, who were descendants of Joel Stone, built a booming business in lumber and grist milling and were strong supporters of the local Presbyterian Church. The McDonald family home is the present town hall for Gananoque. The original church was located at the corner of King and Church Streets in the west end of present Gananoque in a small frame building. St. Andrews welcomed their first minister, Reverend Henry Gordon, in 1837, ending the 26 years of service of Reverend Smart. As the congregation grew, it became apparent that a larger building was needed, and the Honorable John MacDonald donated the land for our present church. Construction began in 1851, and it took four years to complete, with the main body of our church, excluding the wings in the church hall, being built. Reverend Smart, Smart filled in that year for Reverend Gordon, who had gone home to Scotland, for a visit with his family, and he returned with a rose window, which was installed as the church was completed. This same rose window that we see above the organ 
was installed with the idea that it would be in view sunlit from behind when you stepped in the front door of the church. In 1871, the church hall was added with a choir loft and interior gallery. In 1887, the north and south wings and chancel were completed. Electricity was installed in 1892. One of the early issues that the Congregation of St. Andrews dealt with was the installation of the church organ in 1874. Up until that time, music was provided by a melodeon or a cello. The organ was considered an adornment by the stricter members of the church, and when permission was granted to have one installed, some left the church in protest. Before the adoption of the organ, hymns had been simple psalms sung without musical accompaniment. In Lansdowne, ministers continued to visit and preach, and Presbyterians in the area would often share in services with other Christians. One prominent Presbyterian who was a pioneer in the medical field, Dr. Elizabeth Rabidi, retired to the area and helped with the organization of local Presbyterians. In 1914, the world was plunged into the Great War and St. Andrews, like other churches in the community, answered the call. Some of the men of St. Andrews marched off to war, never to return. Churches and community groups sent care packages to the soldiers overseas. It took time, but after the war, life returned to normal. With it, new churches were set up, including the Church of the Covenant in Lansdowne, which was formed in 1925. The church congregation in Lansdowne was created by Presbyterians, not wanting to be part of those who voted to form the United Church. The Church of the Covenant was supported by the prominent Darling family. At this time, they welcomed their own minister and founded their, ability, their building, congregation, and church culture. Unfortunately, the good times of the 1920s didn't last long, and the Great Depression came. During the Depression, the congregation would sometimes meet in Gracie Hall to conserve resources and costs. Then war came again, and once again St. Andrews and those in Lansdowne answered the call. Once again men marched to war, once again people at home did what they could. Once the war was over, again things went back to normal, and both churches boomed. St. Andrews has continued to evolve over the years. The organ has been relocated. The Sunday school rooms added to Gracie Hall on the north and south sides, and the chancel area renovated at the end of the last century. The hall was renovated in 2009 with the installation of ramps, modern accessible washrooms, and removal of an old stage by the tall cupboard doors. The meeting rooms surrounding Gracie Hall were also redecorated. Recently, we have had an industrial dishwasher installed, a working carillon repaired, various rooms painted, and a new church sign. The kitchen floor and carpet in the sanctuary have been replaced and work completed on the furnace. And even this year, a coated door lock was installed. From small congregations meeting in homes with itinerant preachers to present day, St. Andrews has reflected the change in the history of the Presbyterian Church in Canada and the history of the local area. One of the signs of modern church life is the amalgamation of small churches, as has happened within the past year with the Congregation of the Church of the Covenant joining the Congregation of St. Andrews. Throughout its history, men and women of faith have built a church family that truly reflects the motto of our church. We welcome all and share God's joy. Now it's important for us today to look back at the rich history of faith that has sustained the congregation here in Gananoque and also in Lansdowne. We have heard possibly for the first time for some of us here today of how this place of worship has grown and changed over the decades and centuries. We are surrounded by memories of those who have worshipped before us and benefit from their dedication to their faith 
and their church. Now with this in mind, I want us to not only celebrate where we came from, but to look ahead to the future of this church and our, our place in the history of St. Andrews. This Sunday is the final Sunday in the church calendar, and the next time we meet, we will be celebrating the first Sunday of Advent and sharing in communion together. I would like to challenge everyone here this morning to take some time today and this week to think of how much this church has influenced your lives and how your lives have changed from having gathered and worshiped here. I would further challenge you to think about ways that you can share those memories with others and to think about where you would like to see this church grow in the years to come and again fulfill our goal to welcome all and share God's joy.